Hi guys, <clears throat> it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful, a little bit windy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this absolutely gorgeous, it is a Saturday morning, September 11th, 2021, September 11th. <clears throat> I know there's something about this day. I just can't remember what it is. But anyway, whatever it is, is I guess not that important anymore. Uh, hmm. Anyway, it is Saturday morning, and that's what's most important. And of course, Saturday. This is the second edition of my new Hopium Apocaloptimism Roundup Rant, where I'm just pushing all of the Hopium and the apocaloptimism over to Saturday uh, so we don't pollute the rest of the week. But we're going to have some fun. We're going to look at how the clueless moron, you know, the little, the little lefty greenies and the, the normies and whoever are looking at the state of the planet, figuring out what we're going to do with the collapse of a civilization and a planet and a few of the ideas we've come up with so good lord this is in no particular order all right guys this is just kind of sort this is surfing the mainstream media my own email box and i do appreciate all of my alert listeners but this of course you know i always we're going to start out like I'm gonna hopefully there will be one of these every week. We're gonna have a petition to sign because I know so many of us feel powerless to do anything against you know these giant corporations and the banksters behind it all. But Rainforest Action Network, I have been a proud member of Rainforest Action Network for ten or twelve years at least, and so Rainforest Action Network has a new petition. And we're going to tell those banksters behind it all to get their act together. Okay. We're sending this petition out to J.P. Morgan Ch Chase, BlackRock, and any bank and insurer with assets in the Amazon rainforest, which would be all of them. Okay. Take it away. Brazil is experiencing an unprecedented assault on indigenous people's rights and rollbacks on environmental protections. In the past two years alone, we have witnessed a consistent dismantling of environmental governance and the stepping up of the government's anti-environmentalist policy, rolling back enforcement, harassing civil servants, cutting environmental agencies' budgets, halting the collection of environmental fines, despite rising levels of deforestation. This has resulted in alarming rates of devastation with figures in 2020, the highest for 12 years, and growing unchecked in 2021. In June this year, Brazil's own National Space Research Agency recorded the most fires in the Amazon region and in the Cerrado for 14 years, raising concerns about devastating fires to come amidst intense drought and emboldened loggers using slash and burn clearing. As your financial institution is a major investor in and financer of companies operating in Brazil, you must take action to ensure you, you, JP Chase, you BlackRock Corporation, yes, you must take action to ensure you are not complicit in the deforestation and degradation of the Amazon ecosystem critical to global carbon sequestration and the violation of indigenous people's rights. We urge you to take a hard line, BlackRock, JP Chase. We urge you to take a hard line in public and private 
against this regressive legislative agenda and put forward by the Bozo Nero administration and its allies in the Brazilian Congress. That includes taking a public stance against all bills that weaken protections for forest and indigenous peoples. There. You take that! All right. Now that I have done my part to save the planet by signing a petition telling BlackRock to get out of the uh, Amazon rainforest, we're going to go look at uh, probably the most widespread reported uh, hopium of the week. We're going to go to Iceland for this one. The world's biggest carbon sucking machine is switching on in Iceland, in case you want to know what the world's biggest carbon sucking machine looks like. There you go. The world's biggest carbon sucking machine. All right, we're gonna suck that carbon right up there. Okay, take it away, quartz. Yes. We have to start removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to have any chance of averting the worst impacts of global warming, the IPCC said last month. Yes, the fossil fuel economy must be run in reverse, effectively. The simplest and lowest cost way, the simplest and lowest cost way to do that, planting trees requires a lot of land relative to the scale of intervention that's needed. So a handful of companies have been tinkering with direct air capture, essentially big CO2 sucking machines. Yes, and uh, of course I payrolled out of there. I'm trying to remember in another article talking about how many cars worth of uh, CO2. So this machine, I have the wrong article where where it was uh, where it detailed. I think this machine costs 15 million dollars to build. And I'm pretty sure I remember that it sucks out the equivalent of 870 cars, or was it 870,000 cars? I think, I think it was 870 cars. $15 million to suck out 870 cars worth of emissions. So there's 1 billion cars on the planet, divide that by 870, or hell, 8,700, 87,000, 870,000, divide that up, uh, you know, and 1 billion divided by that, you know, factor in the 15 million dollars, and then what is it that cars represent 12 percent of carbon emissions? Multiply that number, and it'll probably come out somewhere to about, for every car on the road, we're going to spend about two and a half million dollars to suck the tailpipe of one car off the planet. But anyway, we got a lot on the plate, so we got to move on from the world's biggest carbon sucking machine in Iceland. We're going to go out to somewhere in the desert sometime in the near future. We're going to go to, I believe, it's Telosa. Telosa. You probably never heard of Telosa. Former Walmart president reveals plan for a $400 billion utopian city in the U.S. desert. Yes, billionaire and former Walmart president Mark Lore helped outline his plan for a $400 billion metropolis tabbed, quote, the new city in America to be built in the desert if properly furnished, funded, 
Yes. Lore's mission statement for the city of Tolosa is to, quote, create a more equitable and sustainable future that can become a blueprint for future generations. Close quote. That's backed by a 150,000 acre design proposal with eco-friendly architecture, sustainable energy production, and a drought-resistant water system. Yes. So, Tolosa is set to house around 5 million people. Yes. Five million people will be moving to the American Southwestern Desert sometime in the near future to create a utopian city. There you go. Okay, from Tolosa, Arizona, I guess. Uh, now, I, I would love to be able to show you this video, but I don't need a copyright strike. Extreme e-truck competition races for a greener future. ABC News' James Longrun reports on Extreme E, an all-electric super truck series powered entirely by renewable energy that aims to shine a light on climate change. Yes, I'm just going to hopefully uh, this won't uh, get, me a, uh, get me a copyright strike. So anyway, this is a view of, uh, of an, this is extreme e-trucks tearing up the future site of Tolosa, Arizona to shine a light on climate change. Yes. Uh, super monster e-trucks tearing up the desert. Yes, racing for a greener future. Yes. Uh, all right, guys. Anyway, okay, what is going on with nuclear fusion? Magnet milestones. Move distant nuclear fusion dream closer. Yes. Teams working on two continents have marked similar milestones in their respective efforts to tap an energy source key to the fight against climate change. They have each produced very impressive magnets. Yes. On Thursday, Scientists at the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor in southern France took delivery of the first part of a massive magnet so strong its American manufacturer claims it can lift an aircraft carrier. There you go. I think we should just start plucking uh, all of these Chinese and Russian warships. Just. Put a big ass magnet on there and just suck them, just, just take them right, pluck them right out of the damn ocean while we're sucking all that CO2 out of the air. Now, guys, actually, I have to say this nuclear fusion thing, you know, I've been listening to this bullshit uh, for at least 50 years. But, guys, I, I have to say, if I were to put my money on one of these, it probably would be this nuclear fusion stuff. Which, of course, you know, gets down to the third level of the onion that if they really do uh, ever produce, say, a real, live, clean, green, limitless supply of energy uh, for humanity, that will be the final game over for the planet. Anyway, but before we get bring in the giant magnets, we just got to get rid of all of this gas sucking, in this case, aviation fuel, where Chevron <clears throat> and energy firm Givo join hands to invest in sustainable 
aviation fuel. U.S. oil major Chevron Corporation and renewable energy firm Givo Incorporated will jointly invest in building and operating one or more facilities that would process corn to produce sustainable aviation fuels, the companies announced on Thursday. Yes, the move comes in the midst of oil companies seeking to bulk up in the burgeoning renewable fuels space. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Biden administration is discussing a target date of 2050 for weaning aircraft at, off of fossil fuels. Yes. Um, sustainable Aviation fuel is made from feedstocks such as used cooking oil and animal fat and can be three or four times more expensive than making traditional jet fuel. Yes. So we're going to have cooking fat and corn flying us around the planet in 2050. Okay. What is the Pope up to? Yes. <clears throat> what is Pope Francis up to this week to save the planet? Pope urges leaders to, quote, listen to the cry of the earth and tackle climate crisis ahead of COP26. <clears throat> Senior Christian figures, and namely Pope Francis, have issued a stark warning of the, quote, catastrophic consequences <coughs> which will result due to inaction on, on tackling the climate crisis with just two months to go, two months to go before the UN's COP26 climate sumps says, all right. Pope Francis, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and ecumenical patriarchal Bartholomew, the leader of the Eastern Orthodox Church, the, basically the three top Christians on the planet, have released a first ever joint statement saying COP26 is a, quote, critical moment and an opportunity for transformation. Yes, in the statement, the three Christian leaders urge people to choose life and listen to the cry of the earth and people who are poor. Yes, and call on international leaders to embark upon a transition to a, quote, just and sustainable economies. Yes, just and sustainable economies. Yes, quoting the statement from the three biggest Christians, quote, technology has unfolded new possibilities for progress, but also for accumulating unrestrained wealth and many of us behave in ways which demonstrate little concern for other people or the limits of the planet. Close quote. Yes. Uh, let's see. All right. The coming COP26, the statement suggested, provides, quote, a unique position to tackle these crises, yes, to seize an opportunity for conversion and transformation, yes. <clears throat> All right, so we have, who do we have? We have the three biggest Christians on the planet. We have Rainforest Action Network, we have Chevron Corporation, and we cannot, oh yes, the 
the billionaire former president of Walmart, and obviously we cannot forget Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos saving the planet. Jeff Bezos's Earth Fund. Je Jeff Bezos actually has a uh, actually has probably a giant tax write-off called Earth Fund. Yes, highlights climate justice in $200 million round of grants and pledges. Yes, the Bezos Earth Fund. The Bezos Earth Fund today announced $203 million in grants and pledges aimed at advancing climate justice, supporting climate-oriented economic recovery projects, and spurring innovation and pathways to decarbonization. Yes. <clears throat> Quote, this funding is just the next step in the Bezos Earth Fund's commitment to creating catalytic change during this decisive decade. Yes. With each grant, we are helping organizations unblock progress and create pathways to a more sustainable future. Thank you, Jeff Bezos, the world's richest uh, billionaire. Is Jeff Bezos a trillionaire yet? Good old Jeff Bezos coughing up $200 million, which I think is about 0.001% of his own personal wealth. That, of course, he has made from Amazon.com, one of the single biggest uh, planet-eating corporations in the history of humanity. Amazon, uh, how many what is the carbon footprint of Amazon Incorporated? All right, we're gonna finish this with this one. Uh, we've already been through Biden administration sets goal of replacing all jet fuel with sustainable alternatives by 2050. Okay. <coughs> now, this isn't exactly hopium. This is fox guarding the hen house, uh, which is kind of a close enough cousin. So I just threw this story right here on today's <coughs> mainstream media from the Washington Examiner. <coughs> Oil and gas industry <coughs> claims success success on cutting methane emissions. The oil and gas industry is touting voluntary efforts of companies to cut emissions of methane. Yes, as the EPA gets set to issue new regulations for the potent greenhouse gas, the American Petroleum Institute released its third progress report today on a voluntary program. It started with 26 oil and gas companies in 2017 called the Environmental Partnership. Yes, uh, <laughs> a, okay, this is the American Petroleum Institute partnering with 26 oil and gas companies calling themselves the Environmental Partnership. So we have the big fox in the hen house partnering with 26 little foxes calling themselves the Chicken House Protection Partnership, which <clears throat> it created to limit leaks of methane. Yes. <clears throat> the report 
showed that the partnership, which has now grown to more than 90 members, including large and small operators in every major U.S. oil and gas basin, <clears throat> has implemented a methane leak detection and repair program. Yes. Participating companies conducted more than 430,000 leak surveys, leak surveys in 2020, across more than 85,000 production sites, reporting a leak occurrence rate, a leak occurrence rate of 0.04% or less than one leak, less than one leak for every 2,000 components. That leak rate <coughs> is lower than the 0.08%, the same partnership reported in 2019. Yes, it is so nice that the foxes are reporting only a loss of 0.04% of the chickens. That is one, that is less than one chicken being eaten by a fox for every 2,000 chicken houses, says the fox guarding the chicken houses. Anyway, <clears throat> all right. But uh, I know you guys, you need to put this on your calendar. You need to put on your calendar Thursday, September 23rd at 10 a.m. You can have a free online webinar. Reduce your carbon footprint and grow your business with Nestle Corporation and IBM. Yes. Sustainability is your business imperative. Regulatory requirements, those pesky regulatory requirements, consumer and investor pressures, along with the desire for cost savings and increased efficiency, have made sustainability critical to your business success. Whether you're focused on reducing your carbon footprint or radically transforming your business to gain competitive advantages, there are practical steps you, as a business owner, can take now to minimize your impact on the environment and create a stronger, healthier business too. In this one-hour webinar, join leaders from Nestle uh, Corporation, IBM, and the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, yes, for a discussion about the top use cases for sustainability and how we can preserve this planet for future generations. Yes, we're going to let Nestle Corporation, Nestle Corporation, uh, I, I don't know how many millions of tons uh, that Nestle Corporation uses of palm oil and cacao, for instance, and of course the IBM Corporation being one of the biggest U.S. military industrial complex contra defense contractors. Yes. Okay. Key areas of discussion will include emerging technology to accelerate your sustainable business. You know, suck that carbon dioxide right out of the air. Partnerships like the one we just heard between American Petroleum Institute and 90 major oil companies. Partnerships fueling industry innovation to protect our planet. And 
proven <coughs> solutions that are making it faster and easier for every business to reduce their carbon footprint. But we're going to wind up with this probably the most honest article of all. All right, to wind up this edition of our Hopium Roundup, optimistic researchers say there is still time to head off climate change before it starts killing rich people. Yes, from Berkeley, California, in a rare silver lining amid increasingly dire assessments of the climate crisis, optimistic researchers at the University of California, Berkeley, released a report Friday, just yesterday, suggesting there is still time to head off environmental catastrophe before it starts killing rich people. Quoting the new uh, study from Berkeley, though rising sea levels and powerful storms are devastating coastal areas, it is not too late to stop floods from threatening those who live high, ab high above the water in multi-million dollar penthouses, said climatologist and report author Dennis Gibson, explaining that by the year 2030, the wealthiest 0.01% of Americans would need to increase investment in charter helicopter services to ensure they would have a way to travel from a metropolitan high-rise to their vacation home without inconvenience. Quote, similarly, Rich people's ski chalets in Wyoming, Vermont, and the Alps are at elevations that provide them with natural protection against flooding rivers. <coughs> in the case of wildfires, however, they must act now <coughs> if they wish to save their mountain retreats, mansions in wine, the wine country, <coughs> and various other country estates. The time has come for the wealthy to stop these fires by buying up all of the surrounding properties so they can clear cut every single tree within a mile radius of their palatial homes. Close quote. Uh... Despite its overall optimistic conclusions, the report stated that the climate crisis has already worsened to the point at which rich people really ought to start thinking about selling their private islands in the Caribbean. <laughs> and of course, that last article, which of course is the most honest uh, article of them all was from The Onion, in case you have not figured that out by now. Uh, the Onion being the single most. Uh, it's The Onion and OilPrice.com have emerged as the two most honest uh, journalistic, journalistic roundups of the climate crisis. But anyway, since I do not live on a mountaintop, and I do live in a floodplain, I need to get out there on this gorgeous, unrainy day in the Finger Lakes and figure out how to, uh, how to, uh, figure out how to, hmm. anyway, little dog, help me figure out and you need to get out there and figure out how to do something. <clears throat> wow, you still can. Bye, guys. <clears throat> All right, little dog, you can get back to figuring out how to get that chippy. How do you get that chippy like that? Are you going to get that chippy out of the Tony House or not? <clears throat>